The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson five on your distance education program in chemistry for lower seat science. I am Longni Gingu Innocent, your chemistry teacher. We are still on the topic matter, properties and transformation and we are treating the subtopic, the mole concept. This subtopic, the mole concept, will be treated in the following lessons. Relative atomic mass, relative molecular mass and molar mass, the mole and Avogadro constant, empirical and molecular formulae, part one, empirical and molecular formulae, part two, mole quantity of gases, Determination of molar mass or volatile liquid, mole quantities of solutions, part one, mole quantities of solutions, part two, mole concept and chemical equations, acid base titrations, part one, acid base titrations, part two, oxidation numbers and naming of inorganic compounds, balancing redox equations, redox titrations. Precipitation and complexometric titrations, yield of reactions, and limiting reagent. Before starting today's lesson, let us correct the assignment we had at the end of our previous lesson. Correction of assignment. Suppose 20 cm cube of a gaseous hydrocarbon reacted with 130 cm cube of oxygen to produce 80 cm cube of carbon dioxide and some water. No oxygen or hydrocarbon remains at the end of the reaction. Determine the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon. Solution. Now the combustion, of the combustion equation of the hydrocarbon is one in which one mole of hydrocarbon CXHY will react with X plus Y over four moles of oxygen to give X moles of carbon dioxide plus Y over two moles of water. So if we know the values of the unknowns x and y, we can conveniently determine the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon. The volume of the hydrocarbon is 20 cm cube, the volume of carbon dioxide 80 cm cube, and the volume of oxygen used in the experiment is 130 cm cube. This is because no oxygen was left at the end of the reaction. x is equal to volume of carbon dioxide over volume of the hydrocarbon. Substituting volume of X and volume of hydrocarbons with their values, we have X is equal to 80 cm cube over 20 cm cube. Simplifying, we have a value of X is equal to 2. Also, X plus Y over 4 is equal to volume of oxygen used over volume of hydrocarbons. We substitute X with its value, volume of oxygen with its value, and the volume of hydrocarbon with its value, we have 4 plus y over 4 is equal to 130 divided by 20. Simplifying, we have y over 4 is equal to 13 over 2 minus 4. This gives us y over 4 is equal to 13 minus 8 over 2, and y over 4 is equal to 5 over 2. Simplifying further, we have a value of y is equal to 10. So y is equal to 10 and x is equal to 4. And the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon CX is gotten, uh, CXHY is gotten by substituting X and Y with their values. 
So molecular formula of the hydrocarbon is C4H10. Lesson 5 is titled More Quantity of Gases. The outline of this lesson is as follows Objectives, prerequisites, more quantity of gases, evaluation, assignment, and references. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define and use the molar volume of a gas in calculations of number of moles and mass of a gas. You should be able to state and apply the gas laws in calculations. And you should be able to derive the ideal gas equation and use it to estimate the molar mass of a liquid. Prerequisite. In order to effectively understand this lesson, you must be able to calculate the number of moles of a substance when mass is given. You must be able to state and apply Boyle's law and Charles law. You must be able to convert temperature from degrees Celsius to Kelvin and vice versa. Mole quantity of gases. Molar volume of a gas. The molar volume of a gas is the volume occupied by one mole of the gas under standard conditions of temperature and pressure. In comparing volumes of gases, two reference points of temperature and pressure have been considered. These are standard temperature and pressure abbreviated STP and room temperature and pressure abbreviated RTP. A standard temperature and pressure, the temperature is 273 Kelvin or zero degrees Celsius the pressure is one atmosphere, which is the same as 760 millimeters of mercury or 101,325 pascals. And the molar volume of a gas is 22,400 cm cube per mole or 22.4 dm cube per mole. At room temperature and pressure, the temperature is 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees Celsius. The pressure is one atmosphere or 760 millimeters of mercury, or 101,325 pascals. And the molar volume of a gas is 24,000 cm3 per mole, or 24 dm3 per mole. Calculation of moles of a gas. When working with gases, it is usually more convenient to measure the volume than the mass. Therefore, the number of moles of a gas can be calculated Using the formula, number of moles is equal to given volume divided by molar volume. That is, N is equal to V over V subscript N, where V subscript M is the molar volume of the gas at RTP or STP. We know that number of moles is also equal to the given mass over the molar mass. So if we, if we equate number of moles which is equal to given mass of a molar mass to number of moles which is equal to given volume of a molar volume we have given mass of a molar mass is equal to given volume of a molar volume. It's important to remember that this equation can be used to calculate the given mass of a gas from its given volume under standard conditions. Example 1. In an experiment to prepare carbon dioxide, a student collected 2,800 cm3 of carbon dioxide at room temperature and pressure from a delivery tube into a gas jar. Calculate A, the number of moles of carbon dioxide, B, the mass of the gas, and C, the number of molecules of the gas collected. Solution A, calculate the number of moles of the gas. The given volume of carbon dioxide is 2,800 cm3 and the molar volume of carbon dioxide at room temperature and pressure is 24,000 cm3. The number of moles of carbon dioxide can be calculated by dividing the given volume by the molar volume. So substituting given volume and molar volume with their values, we have number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to 2,800 cm3 divided by 24,000 cm3 per mole. 
Simplifying this, we have number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to 0.117 mole. B. Calculate the mass of the gas. The number of mole of carbon dioxide calculated is 0.117 mole. The molar mass of the gas is gotten by adding the masses of its constituent elements. That is, molar mass of carbon dioxide is equal to 12 plus 2 into 16. And this gives us 44 grams per mole. Now, number of moles is given by the given mass divided by molar mass. Making the given mass the subject of the equation, we have given mass is equal to number of moles times molar mass. Substituting number of moles and molar mass with their values, we have number of moles is equal to 0.117 moles times 44 grams per mole, which simplifies to give us given mass is equal to 5.148 grams. C. Calculate the number of molecules of the gas collected. Number of moles of the gas calculated is 0.117 moles, and uh, the Avogadro constant is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 molecules per mole. Number of molecules is given by the formula number of molecules is equal to number of moles times Avogadro constant. Substituting number of moles and Avogadro constant with their values, we have number of molecules is equal to 0.117 moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole, which simplifies to give us number of molecules to be 7.04 times 10 to the power 22 molecules. The gas laws. Boyce law. Boyce law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is inversely proportional to its pressure at constant temperature. I repeat, Boyce law states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure at constant temperature. Boyce law can be expressed mathematically using the equation P is inversely proportional to 1 over V at constant temperature, or P is inversely proportional to volume at constant temperature. Introducing a constant of proportionality, we have P is equal to K, which is a constant, divided by volume, or PV is equal to a constant. So we consider two sets of conditions, P1, V1, which is equal to K, and P2, V2, which is equal to the same constant, and equating the two equations, we have P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Now consider the two containers on your screen containing a given mass of a particular gas. Container A has a pressure of one atmosphere and volume, two cubic decimeters. And container B has a pressure of two atmosphere and volume, one cubic decimeter. I'd like you to understand that since the volume of container B is half that of container A, now the number of moles of gases there will stop. The, the, the molecules of gases in container B with its smaller volume will suffer more collisions with the walls of the container and among themselves than in A. And as they collide with each other, the pressure of the gas in B will be greater than that of A. That is why when there is a decrease in volume, there is an increase in pressure in accordance with Boyle's law. Boyle's law can be represented graphically using the equations on your screen. There are graphs of P versus pressure versus volume, volume versus pressure. Notice clearly that on the graph of pressure versus volume, when pressure is decreasing, volume is increasing. And when volume is increasing, pressure is decreasing. Same for the graph of volume versus pressure. Now also look at the graph of pressure versus one of our volume. A straight line graph. So when pressure is increasing, one divided by volume increases. So this is direct proportion. Pressure is directly proportional to one divided by volume. It's the same thing for one divided by volume versus pressure. Example two. What volume would 2,500 cm cube of a gas occupy if its pressure is changed from 760 millimeters of mercury to 630 millimeters of mercury at constant temperature. The initial volume is 2,500 cm cube. 
Initial pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. The final pressure is 630 millimeters of mercury. And the final volume is what we are looking for in the question. We know that P1, B1 is equal to P2, V2. So if we make the final volume V2 the subject of the equation, we have V2 is equal to P1, V1 over P2. Substituting P1, V1, and P2 with their values, we have V2 is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury times 2,500 cm3, all divided by 630 millimeters of mercury. And this gives us V2 is equal to 3,015.9 cubic centimeters. So the gas will occupy a volume of 3,015.9 cubic centimeters. Charles Law. Charles Law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, provided the pressure is constant. I repeat, Charles Law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, provided the pressure is constant. Charles Law can be expressed mathematically using the equation volume is directly proportional to absolute temperature at constant pressure. Introducing a constant of proportionality, we have V is equal to K times T, or V divided by T is equal to a constant. So V1 over T1 will be equal to a constant K, and V2 over T2 equal to the same constant K. So equating both equations, we have V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Now, consider the cylinder on your screen that contains a fixed mass of a given gas. Now, if the gas is heated at constant pressure from a temperature of 200 Kelvin to a temperature of 400 Kelvin, the molecules of the gas will gain kinetic energy. They will move faster, and as they move, they collide with each other and the walls of the container and pushing themselves far apart, thereby increasing the volume. So when temperature increases at constant pressure, the volume will also increase, according to Charles Law. Charles Law can be represented graphically using the equations, of the, using the graphs on the board. Now the first graph is a graph of volume versus absolute temperature. Discover clearly that when volume increases at constant pressure, the temperature also increases. It's important to note that when applying Charles' law or other gas laws in solving problems, all temperatures must be converted to absolute temperatures, that is, temperatures in Kelvin. Example 3. At negative 20 degrees Celsius, a certain gas occupies a volume of 3 liters. What will be its volume when its temperature is now 27 degrees Celsius? at constant pressure. Now, the initial temperature is negative 20 degrees Celsius, and the final temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. So if you want to convert both temperatures to corresponding temperatures in Kelvin, you are going to add 273 to them. And so T1 will become 253 Kelvin, and T2 will be 300 Kelvin. The initial volume, V1, is 3 liters, and the final volume is what we are calculating in the question. V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. So if we make V2 the subject of the above equation, we have V2 is equal to T2 V1 over T1. Substituting T2 V1 over and T1 with their values in the equation, we have V2 is equal to 300 Kelvin times 3 liters divided by 253 Kelvin. And simplifying, we have V2 is equal to 3.56 liters. The combined gas equation. When Boyle's law and Charles' laws are combined, the combined gas equation is obtained. Remember that Boyle's law states that the pressure of the the pressure of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to both to its volume at constant temperature. While Charles' law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature at constant pressure. Combining both laws, we have volume is directly proportional to absolute temperature and inversely proportional to volume. 
introducing a constant of proportionality, we have V is equal to K T over P, or P V over T is equal to K. Considering two different conditions, we have P1, V1 is equal to P1, V1 over T1 is equal to K, and P2, V2 over T2 is equal to K. To equate both equations, we have P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. And this is the combined gas equation. Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. I repeat, Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. Avogadro's law can be expressed mathematically as volume is directly proportional to number of molecules. Introducing a constant of proportionality, V will be equal to K times N. Example 4. At a certain temperature and pressure, 1.15 grams of ethanol vapor occupies a volume of 61.123 cm3. Under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, 0 0.80 grams of a certain gas X occupies the same volume. What is the relative molecular mass of the gas X? Solution. Based on Avogadro's law, equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules, which means that since the volumes of ethanol and the gas X are the same, they will contain the same number of molecules. Now remember that number of molecules can be calculated using the formula number of molecules is equal to number of moles times Avogadro constant. So it means that number of moles of ethanol times Avogadro constant will be equal to number of moles of the gas X times Avogadro constant. Simplifying, we have number of moles of ethanol is equal to number of moles of the gas X. Number of moles is equal to given mass divided by molar mass. Substituting this in the above equation, we have given mass of gas X over its molar mass will be equal to given mass of ethanol divided by the molar mass. Now, making the molar mass of the gas X the subject of the equation, we have molar mass of gas X is equal to given mass of X times the molar mass of ethanol divided by the given mass of ethanol. Now, the molar mass of ethanol is 46 grams per mole. We substitute the molar mass of ethanol and the given mass of the gas X and given mass of ethanol in the above equation. We have molar mass of gas X is equal to 0 0.8 grams times 46 grams per mole, all divided by 1.15 grams. And simplifying, we have molar mass of the gas is 32 grams per mole, meaning that the relative molecular mass of the gas X is 32. The ideal gas equation. When Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Avogadro's law are combined, the ideal gas equation is obtained. Boyle's law states that the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to pressure at constant temperature. Charles' law states that volume is directly proportional to absolute temperature at constant pressure. While Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of gases at the same conditions of temperature and pressure will contain the same number of molecules. Combining the three gas laws, we have volume is directly proportional to number of molecules and temperature and inversely proportional to pressure. If we introduce a constant of proportionality, we have volume is equal to R times N times T all over P. Now, this gives us an equation PV is equal to N R T. And this equation is the ideal gas equation, where R is the molar gas constant. Any gas that obeys the ideal gas equation exactly is called an ideal gas or a perfect gas. I repeat, an ideal gas or a perfect gas is a gas that obeys the ideal gas equation exactly. It's important to note that the value of the ideal gas constant depends on the unit of pressure, volume, and temperature. When pressure is in newtons per square meter and volume is in cubic meter, temperature in Kelvin, the molar gas constant is 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. When pressure is in atmospheres, 
volume in cubic decimeters and temperature in Kelvin, the molar gas constant is 0 0.0821 atmosphere TMQ per mole per Kelvin. Example 5. Calculate the pressure inside the box which contains 0 0.05 mole of a gas in a volume of ATM cube at 30 degrees Celsius. Solution. We convert the temperature in degrees Celsius to a corresponding temperature in Kelvin by adding 273. And so the temperature is 303 Kelvin, number of moles 0 0.05 moles, and the volume 8 cubic decimeter. So based on the ideal gas equation, the pressure is equal to number of moles times molar gas constant times temperature, all divided by Kelvin, by volume. So substituting the unknowns with their values and simplifying, we have pressure is equal to 0 0.16 atmospheres. Recall, it is important to remember that Boyle's law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas is inversely proportional to its pressure at constant temperature. Charles' law states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature, provided pressure is constant. Avogadro's law states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. An ideal gas is a gas that obeys the ideal gas equation exactly. Evaluation. To know how well you have followed this lesson, answer this question. One mole of a gas at zero degrees Celsius and 760 millimeters of mercury occupies a volume of 22.4 cubic decimeter. What will be the volume of the gas at 20 degrees Celsius and 700 millimeters of mercury? Solution. Initial pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Initial volume is 22.4 cubic decimeter. Final pressure is 760 millimeters, 700 millimeters of mercury, and final volume is what we are calculating. So the initial temperature is zero degrees Celsius, and final temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So converting both temperatures to corresponding temperatures in Kelvin, we have T1 is equal to 273 Kelvin, and T2 is equal to 293 Kelvin. Now P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. Making V2 the subject of the equation we have, V2 is equal to T2, P1, V1 over P2, T1. So substituting T2, P1, V1, P2, T1 with their values we have, V2 is equal to 293 Kelvin times 760 millimeters of mercury times 22.4 cubic decimeters all divided by 700 millimeters of mercury times 273 Kelvin. Simplifying we have, V2 is equal to 26.10 cubic decimeters. So the gas will occupy a volume of 26.10 cubic decimeters. Assignment. Before our next lesson, I would like you to answer these questions. Question one. To what temperature must 10 liters of nitrogen at 25 degrees Celsius and 700 tall be heated in order to have a volume of 15 liters and a pressure of 760 tall. Question two, calculate the pressure inside the cathode ray tube, assuming it contains 0.048 moles of a gas in a volume of eight cubic decimeter at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. References. Chemistry for the IB Diploma by Steve Owen. Advanced Chemistry by Michael Cluxton and Rosalind Fleming. Chemistry in Context by Graham Hill and John Holman. Complete Advanced Level Chemistry by Gule Emanuel Eno and the Internet. We have come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on determination of the molar mass of volatile liquids. See you in the next lesson. On a tege si, ma tege yop. On a tege minga, ma tege nyom. On a tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injobia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Esa tina biya jinkido. Mane tambia ninya ne injobia yen. 
Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninyane injo bia yen